Shalom, Hebrews and Hebrews. Welcome to the channel. This is Oldfield Disciple, and we're going to do our daily reading. Uh, we're going to do things a little different here. Um, instead of trying to to squeeze in two chapters, one old, one new, out of each video, um, and keeping it time um, time managing, uh, manageable, we're going to I'm going to do one video on on the New Testament and one video on the Old Testament and. Uh, there'll be days that I'll only get one video up, but um, most of the time I will always get the two videos up um, per day. Um, and so I know it's kind of late today getting this one going. Uh, been on days off trying to get a few things done around here after that ice storm uh, come through and it really wrecked my plumbing around here. Um, and so just trying to get a few things done, trying to get everything done that needs to be done. Um, and so today let's start with uh, we're beginning first corinthians so let's start with that one today the first video here get the camera turned around like we do on this channel if you are not subscribed to the channel and you like the content please go click the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it when it brings up that prompt and click all and you will get notifications when I do new videos. Most of the videos will be on scripture, um, some political um, views and, and, and takes, uh, but pretty much this channel is per scripture. And so we try to stick to that, stick in my lane. So with 1 Corinthians, this is Paul's letter to the, uh, the Corinth, uh, Corinthian people. Um, Corinth was uh, a nation, or not a nation, but it was a, a people and a, a culture um, that were, were were advanced for their time. They had a lot of um, technological advancements in that in that city. Um, they had a lot of things that kept them, um, what we would say here, um, on top. And so Paul is, is, has a church that has been set up, um, a new church, and he's writing a letter to them, and that's what Corinthians, 1 Corinthians is. It's his first letter to, the, to this church, and they have a lot of issues with idols and sexual idolatry, sexual immorality and idolatry, um, and so that's what Paul addresses a lot in, in the letters of Corinth. So let's, let's get started here. Paul, a called apostle of Yeshua Messiah by the desire of Elohim and brother Sosthenes, to the assembly of Elohim, which is at Corinth, to those who are set apart in Messiah Yeshua, called set apart ones with all those calling on the name of Yeshua Messiah, our master, in every place, theirs and ours. Uh, the, the set apart ones are the disciples. Traffic's bad, did not it? So the set apart ones are the disciples. Verse three, favor to you and peace from Elohim, our father and master Yeshua Messiah. I thank my Elohim always concerning you for the favor or the grace of Elohim, which was given to you by Messiah Yeshua, that in him you were enriched in all, in every word and all knowledge, as the witness of Messiah was confirmed in you so that you are not lacking any gift, eagerly awaiting for the revelation of our Master Yeshua Messiah. Verse 8, Who shall also confirm you to the end, unreprovable, which is unaccused, in the day of our Master Yeshua Messiah, who will be unaccused in the day of judgment, those who are called His who call upon the name of the Lord. We will be unaccused. Elohim is trustworthy by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Yeshua Messiah, our master. And I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our master, Yeshua Messiah, that you all agree and that there be no division among you, but that you be knit together in the same mind and the same opinion. All right, that goes to what we've been speaking on or what I've been speaking on here 
um, recently about all these different denominations and how how do we have 42,000 different denominations of, of supposed Christianity when there's only one Jesus, there's only one God, there's only one way, yet we got 42,000 different um, declarations of faith. That, that makes absolutely no sense to me. It means that somebody, a whole bunch of somebodies, has decided that they've got the scoop on what the truth is. And that means that 41,999 of them are wrong. If not all 42,000 being wrong. You see what I'm saying? Paul's saying, be, be no division among you. See, we have divisions today of race and, and color and creed and, and um, culture and, and society. We have, you name it, and there's a division amongst us. But be of same mind and same opinion. Same thought, same understanding. Now, when we read the scriptures... We're not all going to see eye to eye on what it's telling us to do. But the bottom line should be the same. You know, uh, we have we have brothers that won't sit at the same table together because one believes that we're going to be raptured before the coming Great Tribulation. And there's those who believe it's not going to be raptured before the coming Great Tribulation. And therefore, those two have division between them. And they won't even sit at the same table and break bread together. <coughs> Verse 11, For I have been informed concerning you, my brothers, by those of the house of Chloe, that there are strifes among you. Imagine that. What I mean is this, that each one of you say, I am of Shaul, and I am of Apollos, or I am of Kepa, and I am of, of Messiah. Has the Messiah been divided? Was Shaul impaled for you? Did Paul, is, is, is Paul going to save you from your sins? Is Peter going to save you from your sins? Or were you immersed in the name of Paul? I think, Elohim, that I am immersed, that I immerse not one of you except Crispus and Gaius, that no one should say that I immersed into my own name. Now, I did also immerse the household of Stephanus. For the rest, I do not know whether I immersed anyone else. For Messiah did not send me to immerse, immerse is to baptize, but to bring the good news, not with wisdom of words, that the stake of Messiah should be nullified. All right. Paul, and that's kind of the way I, I teach and preach, is don't, don't follow Messiah because of the gallant words that I use, that I have this understanding of, of, of who Messiah is. And because I'm telling you, and because of these great things that I've told you, no, you follow Messiah because of, of the, the conviction that he's placed on your heart through the Holy Spirit, that that leads you and guides you. And these words on this page, these, this book that we hold to, to be the foundation of truth, that should be what leads you to Christ. Now, I can be um, an inspiration or a frustration to you, but that's all I'm to be. Verse 18, for the word of the stake or of the cross is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of Elohim. All right, the cross, the stake. Um, debate on that, whether it was a, it was a cross that we recognize today, um, symbol of Christianity, that cross being actually what Jesus was impaled upon, or whether it was just a stake. And both were used during the Roman times, so we don't really know um, for sure. Um, but either way, it was a tree. It was a, it was wood that he was he was impelled upon, and it was a curse um, to be nailed to a stake. And so he took that curse upon him. It is that power that we hold our faith to be true. Hebrews ten six tells us that we cannot please Yahweh without faith. It takes faith. Faith in what? Faith in Messiah and what He did for us. Verse 19, for it has been written, right? it was written in Isaiah 29, 14, Paul quotes, I shall destroy the wisdom of the wise and set aside the learning of the learned ones. Where is the wise? Paul speaking again, verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scholar? Where is the debater of this age? Has not Elohim made foolish the wisdom of this world? All right, making foolish the wisdom of this world, I go back to that a lot. 
um, the, the, the writer of, of Genesis, did he have to have knowledge of the cosmos? Did he have to have knowledge of, of science and space in order to write correctly the words that God gave him? No. He didn't have to know one thing about the sun, moon, sun, or the sun, moon, stars, earth. He didn't have to know any of that. He just needed to know what God, he needed to hear the voice of Yahweh, the, the, the Holy Spirit, lead him into writing these things down. God didn't create the sun, moon, and stars until the fourth day, yet there was light on the first. Now, there's a reason for that. <coughs> So he's made foolish the wisdom of this world. He's made foolish the science of this world. Verse 21. For since in the wisdom of Elohim, the world through wisdom did not know Elohim. It pleased Elohim through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. And since the Yehudim asked for a sign and the Greek seek wisdom, yet we proclaim Messiah impaled to the Jew, the Yehudim, a stumbling block, and to the Greek, foolishness. All right? To, um, to wisdom, it's foolish that we cling to a Savior, born of a virgin, died on a cross, partook all of our sins and the wrath of God upon himself, went to the grave three days, and three days later rose from that grave and ascended to the right hand of the Father. That's foolishness to wisdom. Wisdom says you cannot have a child without a man and a, a, man and a woman coming together and procreate. That's what science says, and it, it's provable, All right? So Yahweh has has broken down the, the wisdom of the world. To the Jew, they seek a sign. All right, prove, Jesus, that you're, you're who you say you are. Well, he did, but yet they were so blinded by their own lust and desires that they could not see him in the scriptures. Same thing that today's modern cultural Christianity says that the Old Testament is done away with because they cannot see Jesus in the Old Testament because they refuse to look at him. They they have clung to their own idea of what the Messiah should be. No different than the Jew of this time. Now we speak of the Jew of this time because that was the only recognized tribe. The tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin were the only two recognizable tribes of Israel left that were not scattered amongst the nations. And so Jew, when we say Jew, it automatically in, in, engulfs the tribe of Benjamin and the tribe of Judah because that made up the house of Judah, the house of, of Yehuda, Yehudim. Paul being a, um, a bloodline descendant in the house of Benjamin, he is also a Jew. Verse 24, but those who are called both Yehudi and Greek, Messiah, the power of Elohim and the wisdom of Elohim. For the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men, and the weakness of Elohim still stronger than men. For look at your calling, brothers, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty and not many noble. But Elohim has chosen the foolish matters of the world to put to shame the wise. And Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put to shame the strong. We see that over and over in, in, in Old Testament. Um, look at Gideon. Gideon claims to be the lowest of the low of his family, and his family the lowest of the clan of Israel. And yet he used Gideon in a mighty way. Verse 28. And Elohim has chosen the lowborn of the world, and the despised, and the ones that are not, that he might bring to naught the ones that are, so that no flesh should boast in his presence. And of him you are in Messiah Yeshua, who became for us wisdom from Elohim, righteous also in set apartness and redemption, holiness. Anytime I read set apart, that's holy, because holy's definition is to be set apart, be cut out, set apart for a designated purpose. <coughs> and redemption. Redemption is what Messiah did on the cross for us. He redeemed us back unto the Father. Verse 31. That as it has been written, it is written in Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24, He who boasts, let him boast in Yahweh. Give all credit and honor and glory to the Father, to Messiah, to Yeshua. 
to Yahweh. We never everything that I everything that I understand in Scripture is not by my own understanding. It's because the Holy Spirit has has led me and guided me. Um, sometimes I go down rabbit trails um, of history and and whatnot, and I I seek this knowledge of things that normally I would never look at. And sometimes I don't even understand why am I why am I understanding why am I looking at this of history only to the next day or within a short time frame read something in scripture that goes ah if i hadn't read that and understood that i wouldn't understand this the lord has led me and guided me in all understanding and truth no cool 15 minutes all right we'll make video two here in a minute um i hope this will bless you encourage you and even frustrate you go look this up for yourself don't ever take anything i say or any other man's opinion for that matter um, to be gospel truth hear the words of Yahweh and let them uh, correct you lead you and guide you as as the Holy Spirit would see fit for you at this present time I'm Oldfield Disciple and we'll catch you on the next week